Peter Schlumberg was born in 1896 in Kiel, Germany. He graduated high school at the beginning of the First World War and reluctantly left to fight for his country. This experience, in particular the battles at Ypres and Langemark, gave Schlumberg a strong distaste for the mess of a war, as he described it, and contributed to his compulsion to question the world around him and find solutions to the problems he encountered. On his return, he made a bargain with his father, a well-off paints and chemicals manufacturer, that he would give up his claim to his inheritance if his family agreed to support him for as long as he wanted to study. With this backing, Schlumberg was able to explore his natural curiosity, studying Gestalt psychology under one of its founders, Wolfgang Kurler, and completing his PhD in chemistry at the University of Berlin. The extent of his study of chemistry into the complex makeup of biology contributed to his design practice, strengthening his impeccable attention to detail. The goal of Gestalt psychology is to understand how the human mind creates meaningful perception in a world that presents itself as random and chaotic, and this study of human visual reasoning would have also contributed greatly to Schlumberg's logical and aesthetically driven approach to design. This curiosity was not just limited to academic spheres, however. Schlumberg was a strong supporter of the post-war revolutionary movement in Germany, and wrote several papers published by the University of Hamburg calling for the abolition of the military. After graduating, Schlumberg discovered that he could sell the patents he had been creating throughout his academic career and made his living inventing and selling patents for five years. In a 1931 trip to New York, he became fascinated with the US patent system and relocated to the city in 1938. Despite dire warnings from friends about the state of the US economy, Schlumberg got off to a good start, selling patents for vacuum bottles to the American Thermos Company for $7,000. It was in New York City that Schlumberg's charisma and eccentricity really flourished. He was a notorious night owl, known to pay visits to acquaintances to talk inventions at all hours and to take friends on elaborate restaurant crawls that would finish as late as 3am. He balanced this with a methodical and strong work ethic that saw him patent around 3,000 designs throughout his career and create his most long-lasting design, the Chemex. The Chemex was an instant success due to its combination of simplicity and elegance, and was picked up by MoMA for inclusion in its What is Good Design exhibition just three years after its invention. The appeal of the Chemex rests in its use of many of Dieter Ram's principles of design, which underpin modernist design. Good design makes a product useful. First and foremost, the Chemex is a coffee maker, and every aspect of the design affects back to its overarching purpose. It is a tool that enables the consumer to make good coffee with ease and simplicity, and it is this inherent functionality that contributed to its commercial and critical success. Good design is aesthetic. The Chemex is beautiful, but not ostentatiously so. Design author Ralph Kaplan described it as one of the few modern designs for which one can feel affection as well as admiration. Its sleek curves and elegant wooden leather handle make it an art object in its own right, a product that brings people joy simply to look at. This helped elevate it above its less stylish competition and cement its place in the design world and homes around America. Good design makes a product understandable. Schlumberg is famously quoted as saying of the Chemex, with this, even a moron can make good coffee. Through his attention to detail in the design, Schlumberg was able to simplify the coffee making process so much that it becomes almost instinctive. Every aspect of the Chemex makes intrinsic sense to the user. Good design is honest. A strength of the Chemex is the way in which it brings the consumer closer to the product by opening up and simplifying the process. It removes the mysticism that surrounds so much of what we eat and drink, so that not only can the user easily make good coffee, but they can also see and understand exactly how it is happening. The construction of the Chemex is also honest. It celebrates the beauty of its materials and doesn't hide behind unnecessary decoration. Good design is thorough down to the last detail. Schlumberg's attention to detail and methodical approach are best displayed in the Chemex. The carafe is modelled off lab equipment, being the basic shape of a funnel combined with an Erlenmeyer flask, and every aspect of its design is considered. The glass is lab-grade borosilicate, which is designed to withstand heat without imparting any unwanted flavours into the coffee. The pouring spout is extended, creating a channel to allow steam to escape the lower chamber as the coffee drips through the filter. Even the filters themselves are specially designed, made of thick bonded paper more like lab filter paper than regular coffee papers, and designed to extract a pure, bright and clean cup of coffee with no bitterness. Schlumberg's design practice was a balance between eccentricity and methodology. He had perfected the art of allowing his creativity to run wild at the start of the design process, then reining himself in and refining his ideas with unrelenting logic and perfectionism. The result was what he referred to as butilities. 
objects that improved and enhanced the lives of their users both functionally and aesthetically. This balance is something I would love to achieve in my own practice. I find it very easy to rush through the first part of the design process, focusing in on one particular design without taking time to explore other concepts or step back and reevaluate my work. As a result, my work can feel formulaic, allowing myself to explore my more out there ideas and push my concepts as far as I can take them before getting too immersed in refinement would really expand my design practice and help me continually evolve my style. Dr. Schlumberm was inarguably hedonistic and eccentric, however he tempered this with routine and rhythm and used it to fuel an incredibly prolific career.